Great 10 maths lessons. I am Miss Awinu, your maths teacher. Okay, this week we are going to look at practical applications of linear functions. Okay, you can see I've got a table of values and I've also got a Cartesian plane already on the board. So, what are these numbers? Now, let's take for example Mary, an avid jogger. She is crazy about fitness, she loves to run. Okay, so she's recorded. Distance covered in six minutes. You can see time in minutes and the other variable here is distance in meters. Okay, so she's recorded how much uh, distance she covers in six minutes. Okay, now we've already learned about variables x and y on a Cartesian plane. So you can see that time is on the x axis and distance is on the y-axis as shown on our Cartesian plane. So let's see, the first coordinate for x is 1, all right? So that means that's 1 minute. We have 70 meters, okay? 2 minutes at 140 meters. 3 minutes at 210. Okay, we have to be careful with our points. 4 meters, all right, right about here, 5 meters up here, sorry, 5 minutes, at 350 meters, and 6 minutes at 420, okay? You can already see that our points form what is a straight line. Okay, so this is Mary's jog represented on a Cartesian plane, all right, using linear functions, all right. The variables in this case are time and distance. Now, why do we need to do this? She wants to find out how much she can cover in a certain amount of time, okay. She's only recorded up to six minutes and the distance covered in six minutes, but using a linear function, she can determine how much distance she will cover in any amount of time. We can say uh, X amount of time. We don't know how much time, but she can calculate that using this linear function, okay? Now, the first thing we need to do, all right, is to find the gradient of the line, all right? The gradient of the line. Now, in this case, Gradient also tells us the average speed she is taking, all right? And average speed is important when she's running at a constant speed like this, okay? A straight line indicates constant speed or average speed. She doesn't speed up at any point and she doesn't slow down at any point. Her pace is very steady, okay? So let's see, finding the gradient will help us. So we need to form a triangle, okay? We're going to use this triangle right down at the bottom, okay? And as you can see, we have the rise and the run. Remember our formula for finding gradient is M equal to rise over run. Okay. Rise in this case is the distance covered. So distance is equal to 140 meters over the run of two minutes. All right. So the gradient is 70 meters 
per minute. Now, what does this look like? It tells us that the gradient is also the average speed. That means for every minute, she covers 70 meters. So after two minutes, she covers 140 meters. So this makes sense looking at our table of values. Huh? Okay, so average speed is also the gradient of the line. Now, how do we use the average speed to find distance covered in, say, 30 minutes? Okay, now we already learned that to describe a line like this, we need an equation. Okay, so we need to form an equation for uh, uh, Mary's run, okay, or a session jogging. We need to find an equation for this. So if you look at our graph, this line passes through the origin, passes through the origin. So its equation will be in the form y equal to mx. There is no y-intercept, OK? Now, y equal to mx is the form of the equation. Gradient is the average speed, and x in this case here is the time taken. So instead of writing x, we will write y equal to mt. Okay, so gradient multiplied by the time taken. Okay, so equation for this line, okay, back to our gradient here is 70. So the equation, okay, is y equal to 70t, okay, 70t, that's the equation of our line. So rather than running another 30 minutes and looking at the time at the same time as she's running, she can simply use the equation to find the distance covered in 30 minutes. How do we do that? We simply substitute, all right? So 30 minutes is the time Okay, we want to find out how much uh, distance we cover in 30 minutes. So using the equation, y is equal to 70t, okay, we substitute this into the equation. So 70 multiplied by the time of 30 minutes, okay, and total distance will be equal to 2,100 meters, okay? So in 30 minutes, she's going to cover 2,100 meters, okay? That's in meters. If you convert this to kilometers, Mary would have run 2.1 kilometers. Now, this is not the only situation where linear functions can be used. We can use linear functions for uh, quantity and price, okay? More quantity, price increases, okay? Or you can use linear functions to uh, represent weight against height, okay? So these are some of the practical situations where linear functions can be used, okay? Now, I hope you've learned uh, something good here or something new because this is the last lesson under uh, linear functions. Okay, we are going to look at simultaneous equations next. So this wraps up this part of our grade 10 topic. I hope you have had fun. I'll see you in our next lesson.